and the kind of ministry that Brother Blue had, if, if, he, if he would compromise just a little bit, this place would be full. But he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna do it. <laughs> I said, he ain't going to do it. He's going to be like Jesus. Will you go to? Yeah. And when he told the disciples, he's my flesh, drink my blood. And, uh, and they said, man, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? The Bible said many of his disciples, many of his disciples turned. And, thank you, sir. Many of his disciples turned and walked with him no more. Yeah. Instead of Jesus turning around to the 12 and begging them, hey, y'all don't leave me, please. Y'all stay with me. That's what he said. He looked at Peter straight in the eye. And said, you gonna go too? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, no Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because thou hast the words of eternal life. Yeah. And I don't care how rough this word has gotten over the years. And sometimes Brother Luke laid down pretty hot and heavy. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. He'll look me in the eye. You gonna go? No, sir. Hallelujah. You're preaching the words of eternal life. I'm gonna stay right here. Amen. Sometimes when well, I tell you, you know, he, he talked a little bit about it, but I just noticed that, you know, when I would go with Brother Blue, we uh, would take care of some business or whatever, a lot of times we would have to go and see Brother Churro, and Brother Churro would never say nothing. He just looked at me with some prophet eyes and see what you're about. You know, normally, <laughs> normally he don't pay you no attention, but you, if you act like that you might want to get this, oh, he going to test you. He gonna put you through. He gonna test you. He gonna find out what's in you. Man, I tell you, he would. And I would give him abuse. I remember one brother Hank did that. He not man. My brother Hank can witness this. We was walking to the tent, and I used to wear suits, but I quit wearing suits because I was trying to change it up, brother. Mom tried to quit getting the rebukes, and I thought I'm drawing too much attention. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scale it down. I'm going to show him, uh -uh, I'm just trying to be, you know, saved. And we would walk across that tent lot in that grass. Brother Hankins was walking next to his sister daughter, and he said, Brother, uh, man, you, you draw the heavy artillery. I don't know, I'm going to sit with you. <laughs> I might get hit with some of that friendly fire. Man, he was, my mother-in-law, she would just shake her head. But you know, that was all for my making. And, uh, you know, the Bible said that all the sons, if you receive, you're going to be rebuked. And you're going to be chastened. You know, and it did, Brother Anthony, it, I, know, I ain't going to lie to you, it did not feel good. I understand. Now, I know Brother Blue, I was there when, uh, man, we was in Baines, Texas. I never get this. I almost got arrested for this. We was in Baines, Texas. Big meeting. And, uh, man, God was moving, and Brother Blue had just started coming to Tulsa sometime, and he was coming pretty often to preach, you know, because Brother Hudson had a church here, uh, the saints like me and Sister Gretchen, Sister Devil, we was at a different church and was just being introduced to this ministry, and so he would come and preach, and we was in veins, and people were standing up, well, brother, the people was jealous of Brother Blue and yeah. Sister Blue, and they, man, they would do anything to try to get him in trouble. And they had told Brother Terrell some stuff. And uh, people was coming through line, coming through the prayer line. And Brother Terrell get ready to pray for him and say, uh, uh, where are you from? Tulsa. Tulsa? You live in, what you doing living in Tulsa? Oh, I, 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 you at Brother Blue's church? Well, yeah, sometimes. He said, Brother Blue got these people out of the country going back to the city. Because that's what somebody had told me. And man, it was person after person came up and said the same thing. Man, Brother Terrell started prophesying, rain his shirt, prophesying like that prophet where it seemed like the ground shake under your feet. And uh, man, it was rough. And I went out back and uh, <laughs> Brother Blue wasn't going to come back to Tulsa after all that. Man, it was woo. But Sister Della had wrote a letter saying, please help us. And he had that letter. And that's what, you know, he was just going to go back to evangelizing. But when he was evangelizing, because he really wasn't a pastor then, he was just coming in and out. Right. And, uh, but man, he sat there and took it. And next service, he's right back in there like nothing happened. Well, see, I couldn't do that. And I, you know, first of all, 
If you're gonna if you're gonna be a true minister of Jesus Christ, you gonna get your manhood broke. And if you don't, you ain't gonna last. Right. Man, y'all was gonna he gonna he gonna find out what's more important than you obeying me or your manhood. At least that's what I thought it was, you know. But rebuke after rebuke after rebuke, but I couldn't walk away from the court. I wanted to be saved. And I tried to figure out how to get around and I couldn't. So I just started taking it. Brother, I just started taking. You know what I'm talking about. I just started taking. Praise the Lord. And I tell you, I'm so glad today because things can't move me off of the foundation as a result. And that's what, you know, I wanted to say. I say all I have to say this. Brother Blue is a, was ordained and commissioned by the word of the Lord, the prophet, to be here. And to build people upon this foundation for this time, this end time. That anointing, I ain't been anointed to do that. You ain't been anointed to do that. Ain't nobody. God called him to do that. And so I'm going to bring myself self, subject to the general. You know, he was talking about that war, how them, them guys in that war got killed because they got ahead of the general. You know, you wait until you get the you get the orders to go before you go. That's right. You can't get excited and say, hot dog, I'm going to go get it. Yeah. And you'll get yourself in trouble. What's going to happen? And that's why I got rebuked so much because I was zealous and I was trying to go too fast. And man, he slowed me down. <laughs> He <laughs> clipped my wing. Yes, but you know what? When I was, I'm going to tell you, tell you this, and we're going to go. I remember um, we was in a service, and Brother Terrell had, I kind of got past that, and Brother Terrell had ministered to me, and I guess I had a funny look on my face because what he told me, I wasn't expecting. And I was, I was like, uh oh. Because first of all, it wasn't about no unbelief. I don't watch this man talk about the Berlin Wall going to come down, and they watch it come down. I heard him tell people you're gonna live and, and not die, and they live and not die. So there ain't no such thing as not believing. I didn't, I didn't see too much not to believe. But he had told me something that it shocked me and scared Sister Gretchen. She thought, oh Lord, he's gonna get his self rebuke. Man, she gonna, he gonna start that again. Man, we were kind of nervous about it because he had spoke to me about something. I was just shocked, Brother Jose. So I went back to the uh, hotel. We was out of town, and uh, I'd been fasting. We went back to the hotel and slept that night. And uh, instead of Brother Terrell coming to me and rebuking me, in a, in, a, in a visitation that night, I sat up straight in the bed, and there he was standing right there. And, uh, and I thought, okay, you know, obviously he wasn't literally standing there. I'm having an experience. And uh, I was waiting for him to rebuke me, and he did. He asked me, what's wrong? Hallelujah. What's wrong? When you receive God's word, even when it's hard and when it's tight, when you get in a situation, he's not going to rebuke you. He's going to ask you, what's wrong? So he can help you. And man, when he said that, I was scared because I was thinking, if I tell him I don't feel like I can, I'm qualified to do what he prophesied to me, then he gonna think Brother Blue ain't been preaching right. He gonna, he gonna just, I, I went back to that tent revival, the people, the people saying, oh, I'm, I'm from Dove, I'm from Dove. I didn't want to get Brother Blue in trouble. Right. So I didn't want to say, Brother Charlie, I can't do that. I, I don't have the ability to do what you just said. And I was trying to think of what to say. And the Holy Ghost gave me wisdom, and I said, Brother Terrell, I don't feel adequate. He said, you what? I said, I don't feel adequate. I believe your word, but I don't feel adequate. He said, why not? And I said, because there's things that I don't know and understand right now that I need to know. Saints of God, every question I ask, I ask him, he answered. Every one of them. Every one. I tried to write. He said, don't write. Because they ain't given you to write. It was, it, these scriptures were given when God moved upon men of old. <laughs> It was under them, was it ain't under you, right? You can't write this. And so I started crying. I said, well, I can't remember. I said, he said, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he going to bring back to your remembrance everything that I'm telling you right now. Hallelujah. And it went on and on and on. And I just said that to, to say this. I'm glad that I brought myself subject. Because now when I'm in trouble, when my kid's in trouble, or when I'm in situations, I got a secret weapon that most people don't have. Hallelujah.
I got a secret weapon that most people don't have. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach a little bit about that tonight. But we appreciate the Lord. Um, I, just, I just can't say how much I honor the ministry and the word and, and what all it means to me. But if you have your Bibles, turn with me. I've asked Sister Gretchen to help me read some scriptures. I think that'll kind of keep me going here. But um, I want you to get ready to turn with me to, um, I think I'm going to just start here at the book of Acts. The first chapter. And um, I woke up this morning, kind of surprised this great was way before day. And um, I got up and I went to my prayer room, my altar, and uh, for about two and a half hours I was just kind of mesmerized by the spirit, the presence of the Lord. And, um, I didn't know what was going to happen, and then Brother Blue asked me to take it tonight. And I, this morning, when he preached, I thought, man, I'm going to have to do something different, because he, he preaching everything that, that uh, a lot of what I was into this morning. But we appreciate the Lord, because we, you know, that lets me know I'm in the same spirit. Man, that means something to me. I, wanna, I don't want to follow my own spirit. I want to follow his spirit. I, I want to know that I'm right. I want to, you know what I'm talking about? If I want to give a, a, my opinion, I go to PTA meeting or something. <laughs> Alcohol Anonymous, you know, talk it out, you know. But no, I don't want that. I want the real thing. Acts 1 and 6. When they would therefore come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you for this word tonight. God, we ask you to give us that touch. Lord, that anointing for the exhortation of your word. God, give us ears to hear it. Let it sink into our hearts and bring forth the faith in us, Lord, that we need in these times. For, Lord, we need a faith, an unusual, an extraordinary faith. God, in these days that we're facing, for, Lord, we know that your word is sufficient for us. And even when we don't feel adequate, Lord, your spirit in us is. Lord, and you have all the answers. To every situation in our lives, no matter how dark it is or how bad it is, Lord, you have the answer. And tonight we ask you to cast your eyes upon us. Speak to us, Lord. All it takes is one word from you. Oh, God, and the bands are loosed. One word from you, Lord, and the needs are met. And we ask you, in the name of Jesus, cover us in the blood. In Jesus' name. Uh, I'm going to read this uh Scripture right here in Acts 1 and 6 again, because this is where I'm going to be talking from. Uh, when they therefore came together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And I want to talk to you a little bit tonight on restoration. Because God is... You know, he could just take us to heaven, but the Lord wants to show the world something. Yes. And God's going to put things back in order the way they're supposed to be. And then the end's going to come. Hallelujah. Some people are waiting for heaven for perfection. But Jesus is going to bring perfection, and then the end's going to come. If you would, I don't know if I had you to write this one down or not, Sister Gretchen. Did you, Joel, too? Okay. So let's go. I'm, I'm going to read a song first before we get to those other scriptures, I, I think. Uh, Joel 2, 23. Be glad, then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come down.
for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And we all know that that rain is the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. So he's talking about three different times that there was a major outpouring of the Holy Ghost in the last of we ain't seen yet. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore, there it is, restoration. I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the pommel worm, my great army, which I sent among you. God is going to restore. When he's talking about these locusts and canker worms and caterpillars and palmer worms, he's talking about the things that you've gone through in your life. The things that have eaten at your joy. That's, you know, it's, 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 it's deplenished your, your peace or has weakened your body. You know, over time, you keep living, you go through enough to where where you used to be excited, you ain't quite excited no more. Or where you used to be strong, maybe you're not quite as strong no more. Many of us have had greater dedications than what we've got right now. Or at least put it this way, we may be praying as much or even more than what we used to, but the powers that we face, we don't break through as much as we used to. Man, we used to fast a day or two you man, you drop a pen, you explode yeah. with the anointing. Now you got to fight the devil and fast two, three days this week, two, three days next week, and then the week after. And then you start feeling a little bit. <laughs> and that's what he's saying. I'm going to restore that excitement you used to have. I'm going to restore, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's one, you know, well, maybe I shouldn't say that, but, you know, some people, I heard Brother Terrell say, so I say it like that. I heard Brother Terrell say, some people get married, and that man, boy, he can just eat her up. A few, few years later, he wish he had her. <laughs> you know, the Bible says the love of many would wax cold. Hallelujah. Well, some of us need our first love restored. And he said, I'm going to restore it. God is going to put that first love back in you. He's going to put that love in you to where when you read the Bible, you just go out of your mind. How many want to read your Bible and just go out of your mind? Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Believe all things. Hope all things. Thank you, Jesus. 25th verse, he said, I will restore to you the years. 26th, he said, and ye shall eat and plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst. This is it right here. Ye shall know that I'm in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. God is going to restore the church, and we ain't going to be ashamed. Hallelujah. You know, I can't even go out to dinner with, with, the, with the people on my job. I can't take advantage of some of the uh, perks that goes along with my job because I don't drink. And because I don't drink, I ain't no fun. So when they start doing that and I'm around, you know, I'm an odd man out. You know, I'm an oddball. I'm looked at funny. Yeah. How come he ain't drinking? I am drinking. I just drink a different kind of wine. That's all. That's all. That's all. I'm, drinking, I'm, drinking, I'm drinking a wine you know not of. Hallelujah. I'm drinking a wine that don't come with headaches. I'm drinking a wine that don't cause you to have accidents. I'm drinking the kind of wine that don't cause you to beat your wife, cause you to love your wife. I'm drinking the kind of, oh hallelujah, that don't eat up your kidney. It will heal your kidneys. It will heal your, your Hallelujah. Glory. But he said here that he was going to 
you know, I was reading that and he said, and I'm and, and you're gonna know God wants people to know that God's in you. Yes. Yes. So you're right now don't know that God's in you. Oh, you look a little strange. You talk a little different, you may not drink. But hey, just just dressing right and not and not cussing and not drinking, that ain't what salvation's all about. That, man, that's the that's the low-hanging fruit. <laughs> that's the easy stuff right there. When he break them yokes off of you, you are free. You don't need that stuff in your life no more. You don't want that stuff in your life no more. But there's a lot of people that ain't saved that don't drink. There's a lot of people that, that dress right and don't cuss that ain't saved. Hallelujah. God said, uh-uh. I want, I want the world to know that I'm living in my people. I want them to know there's a God in you. See, some of y'all don't realize, but there's a God in you. The Bible said that if they say to you, he's over here, don't believe him, or he's over there, don't believe him. He said because the kingdom of God is not out there somewhere, but the kingdom of God is in you. And he said, I'm going to restore the kingdom back to my people. I'm going to restore, oh, well, hallelujah, when people recognize God lives in you. God walks in you. When you talk, people are going to listen because they don't know when. But at some point, God starts talking out of you. Tonight, God's going to talk out of me. T tomorrow, God's going to talk. You may not know when. You may not know how. But it's going to affect somebody's life. You're going to say one word. It ain't going to be your word. It's going to be his word. And his word is going to break the yoke off that individual. Going to break the yoke off that child. Going to break the yoke off that loved one. God's going to put a word. God wants people to know. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And he said, I want the world to know that the word is now in your mouth and in your heart. God in you. And that's why God's going to give a revival in the end time, a revival of all revivals. Because he's going to show the world who's got it who ain't. He said, in that day you shall know who served the Lord and who don't. Right now we think we know, but we judge on the outward appearance. But God's looking at the heart. Hallelujah. Some of these people that we are overlooking right now, they're going to be giants for God in this day of restoration. They're going to do exploits. They're going to, you're going to sit back and say, man, I never knew he had it like that. I never knew she had it like that. No, we may not have it like that. The Bible says it does not appear what we shall be. But when God restores his kingdom, we shall be like him because we're going to see him. Jesus is going to let you see him. Jesus is going to manifest himself to you. Jesus is going to come in your prayer room. And it it's going to change your life. It's going to change your attitude. It's going to change the way you talk. You're going to be changed. Because he's going to restore this. Not in heaven. But God said, he said, this shall come to pass. He said, and, and, and ye shall know that I am in the midst. Yes. Your family gonna know that God's in your midst. All right. Amen. When you walk in, God walks in. Yes. Why? Because He's living in you. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the Father, the Father, me, and I am you. Yes. Hallelujah. You don't believe me for what I say, believe me for what? The work sake. We finna do some. Y'all, we finna go to work. Yes. I'm, getting ready to, I'm getting ready to retire from Mammon, and I'm finna go to work here in a few more months. I mean, I'm going to work for God. I'm going to do some works, brother Jose. I'm going to do some work. I ain't going to get no rocking chair. Hallelujah. The greatest thing that God has ever done is about to happen. And I want to be a part of it. How many of you want to be a part of it? Hallelujah. Uh, Acts 3 and 18. He says... But those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets. Man, this is such a big thing until God had all prophets to prophesy about the end time and the restoration of the kingdom. So what are you talking about? Listen. But those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets. That Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins might be blotted out. 
Now here you come. When the times of refreshing, this is that times of restoration, shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send who? Jesus Christ. He ain't going to send no angel. He ain't going to send just a vision or a dream. He's going to send Jesus. Jesus is going to come to us. He said, I go away, and where I go, you cannot come. You shall not see me, but again you shall see me. And they said, Lord, how is it that you say that you're going to go away, and when you go, we can't come, and, and we ain't going to see you, but then we are going to see you. He said, because I'm going to come to you. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to come to the world, but I'm going to come to you. And hallelujah, the people that's been visited by Jesus, you don't know them. He said, and shall send Jesus, which was preached unto you, who the heaven must receive until the times, here it is again, of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. So God is going to restore you know, restore and restoration means, you know, if you, you know, a classic car, say like a, 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 say a 67 Mustang. I know a guy, he had one as a kid, he turned it over and burned, and he had this traumatic experience, and he kept the frame, and he has restored it. He has restored it. Now, when you restore it, and some of you in here know a little bit, your brothers, what's up about cars? If you put on something other than the original, you are not, you are not fully restoring that car. Yeah. You got to go back with the original equipment. Right. Hallelujah. Not, not, not some, see, that's what happened to Abraham. Abraham, that faith was coming alive in Abraham, and God told him he's going to have a child, and he's 99, and and Sarah was 90. Sarah laughed, as Brother Blue was telling us the other day. So he, you know, they tried to restore themselves. <laughs> and they didn't have, well, hallelujah, the stuff we got today. So, so Sarah said, well, I know what we do, Abraham. Let's, let, let's go, uh, what was her name, Hagar? Yeah. You, yeah, Hagar, I'm, I'm kind of having trouble with my fitness routine, so you just look like you're making progress. And, and he got ahead of God, didn't he? <laughs> Hallelujah. He got ahead of God. And that's why October 7 happened the other day. That was that, was that seed of Hagar. That, that's why they hate the Jews so much. is because God said, uh-uh. The son of the bondwoman is not going to have the promise of God. The promise is coming to the seed. And Hagar can't have the seed. Sarah, you got to have the seed. Hallelujah. And that's why they hate him today. Because it's kind of like the Esau and Jacob thing going on. Yeah, and Esau hate Jacob because uh, Jacob got the birthright. Hallelujah. Saints, God's going to restore the kingdom, but you're going to be hated because of it. You're going to be so blessed until people hate you. God's going to be with you in such a way until people are going to hate you. They ain't going to like you. They're going to be jealous of you. They ain't got to be jealous. Join us. Come on in. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Jesus is going to restore us back to our original state. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I don't think y'all really understand what that original state really means. Yeah. And I, the best way I can tell you is, is that there was a man that came to Jesus. He was born with a withered hand. Yeah. He, had, he had a short hand and was withered. And he couldn't use it. And he came to Jesus for Jesus to touch him. But it was a Sabbath. And they said, you can't do it on the Sabbath. And Jesus was looking at him. He got mad. And he looked up that man. He stood. He said, stand up. He said, which is it? He said, is it, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath or not? They didn't say nothing. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, Oh, how this is the word of restoration right here. Jesus said, stretch forth your hand. Now he's telling a man with a short arm, stretch his arm out. He's telling a man to do something that's impossible. 
He's telling a man to do something a man ain't never done before in his life. And the Bible said the man stretched his arm out and was made whole just like the other. There's a difference between being made whole. When you're healed, you're healed. But when you're restored, the man didn't get back his original arm. He got a new arm. He was born with a withered hand. So restoration is not giving you what you used to have. The restoration is going to give you something you ain't never had. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. The government's going to be on his shoulder. Go ahead. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of his increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. See, God still by himself is going to restore a new government. That's going to be a new, you know, right now, people are wondering who's going to win, uh, Trump or Biden. You know, they're fighting to be the leaders of the, what they call the leaders of the free world. The American president is considered to be the most powerful of all presidents in the entire world because of the influence that they have throughout the whole world. So you got Trump versus Biden. And while you got that going on, you got old Putin over there trying to take over Ukraine and Zelensky over there. So they're fighting to see who's going to be the who's going to be the ruler over there. And then you got China over there. Oh, Chi, he's trying to flex his muscles. He wants to be a world leader, so he's trying to be somebody. And then you got the rocket man over there in North Korea. He got a nuclear weapon, and, and he's trying to be that. And now Iran is starting to breathe out threats, and, and, and they want to be. All these guys are trying to be the, the, the leader of the free world, but they ain't going to. That's coming a new government. That's coming a new president. It ain't going to be Biden. It ain't going to be Trump. It ain't going to be China. It ain't going to be Russia. The Bible says the government is going to be on Jesus' shoulders. Hallelujah. And he's going to, he's going to rule with a rod of iron. He ain't going to do that in heaven. He ain't, to, ain't no devils in heaven. All the devils are over here with us. He's going to rule around us in our lifetime. Oh, I know that's hard for some of y'all to believe, but it's true. God said, for the zeal of the Lord, I'm going to do this. See, this is bigger than a man. This is bigger than a preacher. This is bigger than a president. This is bigger than a dictator. God said, I'm going to get the world's attention. And with God, I'm going to tell you how, I'm going to tell you how solid it's going to be. It's going to be so good until the Bible says, every knee is going to bow. Oh, the knees in China is going to bow. The knees in Russia is going to The knees in America. Every knee is going to bow in every tongue. You know why? Not, be, not because God just sent a bunch of angels. Uh-uh. That ain't why. That ain't how this is going to happen. God's going to restore you. God's going to restore you. God's going to restore you. And the faith that was once delivered to the saints, he's going to deliver to you. Hallelujah. God's going to raise up some Moses. God's going to raise up some Elijah people. God's going to raise up Moses people. And when these people speak, things are going to happen. When they speak to a mountain and tell it to be removed and cast 
listen to the sea. The Bible said it's going to happen. Oh, we ain't seen it yet, but it's going to happen. Oh, it's going to happen. These signs are going to follow them to believe. Right now, we got 60 people around us. But when God restores his kingdom, ain't nobody sick going to be around you. You know why? Because these signs just follow them that believe in my name. They shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. God has let us see a few miracles so that we can know. But it's, gonna, it's not going to be just one minister or one church or one God. He said the zeal of the Lord is going to do it. You know why? Because Jesus is going to be the king. He's going to be the king of kings and lord of lords right here on earth. He said all power in heaven. Everybody knows he got power in heaven. Hallelujah. But I've got news for you. He got all power in heaven and in earth. And the Bible said, let every soul. Yes. God is fixing to make every soul subject to the higher power. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Every judge is going to have to come subject. Every district attorney is going to have to come subject. Every police officer is going to have to come subject. Every, every, every uh, uh, army, the army is going to come subject. The Navy guy is going to come. Everything is going to come. People who think they got authority are going to find out they ain't but one authority. And that's the name of Jesus. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we can be saved but by the name of Jesus. And the world is fixing to find it out. They want to find it out the hard way or the easy way. The Bible said you fall on this and he'll break you and save you. But if you don't, it's going to fall on you and crush you to power. God is going to drop the hammer on this world. And he ain't going to do it from heaven. He's going to do it through you. He said, touch not my anointing. If you get anointed, I said, he said, touch not my anointing. If you get anointed, do you know what that means? God said in, in Revelation, touch not the wine of the oil. Yes. Touch not that man is praying. Touch not that woman. Yes. God said that the people that sighed and cried, God was going to cause an angel with a writer's inkhorn in his hand to come and put a mark on you. You might not see it. I might not see it. But God sees it. And God said when I destroy the world, when you go to destroy the world and you come across one of them people that got that mark on them, don't you touch them. That's my anointed. Hallelujah. God's going to cause storms to go around your house. God's going to cause accidents to happen on your left, happen on your right, but no harm shall come now your dwelling. You're going to dwell in the secret place of the Lord. God got a secret place in the end time. God got a secret place in a time of trouble. You know, they say in the middle of a hurricane, you know where the safest place to be in a hurricane? In the eye of the storm. Ain't no wind blowing. Hallelujah. It's, it's once it passes you, that's when it get rough. Hallelujah. If tribulations come, it's going to get rough. And it's going to be Jesus. He said, I ride the whirlwinds, God said. God's going to ride these hurricanes. God's going to ride these tornadoes. And if ever they'll get rough, get in the middle of it. Hallelujah. If you don't want to be destroyed, you got to go where it goes. Hallelujah. I said, you got to stay in the eye of the storm. Don't run. People run from their trials. They run from the devil. Quit running from the devil. Quit running from your child. Stand up. Stand up and resist the devil. Stand up and speak to that storm. Stand up and speak to that fear and say, fear, get behind me. I'm a child of God. The kingdom of God dwells inside of me. And greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 25, Sister Gretchen. He must reign. Jesus said, I got the reign. I can't, I can't wind this thing up. Hallelujah. Woo. I can't wind this thing up until the people that know their God are strong and doing exploits. I can't wrap this thing up until these signs are following them to believe. I can't wrap it up until they receive power. Oh, how many wants to receive that power in your life? How I many wants to receive power in your life? Not political power. 
not that, not that kind of power. I'm talking about power, power to get the devil off of people. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Get the devil off of people. Yeah. There's people that's bound by meth and bound by cocaine and bound by crack. I don't know what they do these days, but they're bound by, and they cannot help themselves. Somebody stronger than that crack has got to come to them. Somebody stronger than that meth has got to come to them. Somebody stronger than that alcohol addiction has got to come to them. Well, who's going to do that? The Bible says you are. You got to get them out of this mess. You got to get some anointing in your life. And you don't get that anointing but by prayer and reading the Bible and seeking God. God can put an anointing upon you. God can put an anointing on you that you can lay hands on somebody bound by a drug and you can curse the taste of it and they're not going to taste it. You can put a, you can, you can put a, man, you can put a prayer on them until they drink water and then go like out of a bucket with a hole in the bottom. Yeah. I heard a man of God say in Fort Payne, Alabama one time, and he, and he gave a sign on Boy, that's the sign. Boy, it shoot us up. It probably won't shake y'all up, but it shook me up because it hadn't happened. Now it didn't happen. But he said, God is going to take, when God gets ready to move in this revival, people are going to get saved. You know why? God's going to take the pleasure out of sin. He's going to take, he's sitting there drunk, going to drink, but not get drunk. The dope smoker going to smoke dope, but he ain't going to get high. The pill popper going to take pills, but it ain't going to do nothing to it. Ain't going to have no kind of effect on them. And then, you know what's going to happen then? They're going to go into cravings. Because, you know, they're addicted to that stuff. That's why marijuana is so much stronger today than what it was when I was coming up. It's, it says ten times stronger. You know why? The more you get, the more you got to have. Hallelujah. But God said the revival is going to come and God will take the pleasure out of sin. And when people can't get that high no more, when people can't get that drunk no more, they ain't going to be but one place they can find peace. They ain't going to be but one place that they can find joy. They ain't going to be but one place. Oh, hallelujah. These people, you know, you know who the blessed people are of the earth who are bound now going to be? The people that know you. Hallelujah, because the people that know you are going to have a chance. The people that come across your path, they're going to have an opportunity to get free. God is going to restore these things to us. I know it sounds like a fairy tale to you, but I'll tell you this. When he said that about taking the pleasure out of sin, boy, this will shake, shake and rattle. Because everybody liked Michael Jackson back then. And he got up and he prophesied. And he gave a sign. He said he's a witch. <laughs> he did. And talk about what that, that was way. You, you were there. Were you, were you there for pain? Man, he was years ago. <laughs> yeah, he talked about what he was doing behind closed doors. He also said something that I heard on the news yesterday. He gave another sign and said there's going to be a 17-year locust yeah. Yeah. that's going to come up out of the ground. A locust that's been trapped in the ground for years and years, and every 17 years they 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 kind of come to the surface. I heard him say on TV yesterday that this time, whatever it is that kind of keeps the population down, ain't gonna keep it down. And they said for several days it's gonna be like hell on earth wherever they are. I heard that on Fox News. Wow. 17-year locust. He gave that sign, but all that was a sign to the revival that was gonna come. Here. Revelations. I won't, I won't, I'll just quote this one, but in Revelations eleven fifteen, he says, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Jesus is going to become the King of King and the Lord of all everywhere. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And Daniel. Now here's, here's, I want to read this one, Sister Grace. Let's go to Daniel 7. And I believe it's 21. This one's important to read, I think. Uh, Daniel 7 and 20, 21 and then 25. Go ahead. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. 
25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and to think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of times. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole earth, whole heaven, shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Look here, God is going to restore the kingdom here, but, but you did you read what it said there first? The Antichrist, this is the Antichrist. He could have worked out the saints first. And it said it would prevail. He gonna worry, he gonna prevail. Right now, you know it, I know it, we got loved ones, and the devil is prevailing. Some of us right now have conditions that we're fighting in our bodies. And we're not prevailing right now. It seems to be prevailing. And he said, and in this, in this end time, this is the difference between this ministry and all this other religion you hear about. We're going to tell you the truth. Tribulation is coming upon us. There are going to be hard times. There's going to be a time, the Bible said, and, and here is the faith and the patience of the saints. What? You, patience? Patience means you have to wait on it. It don't happen automatically. It don't happen quick. You got to have patience. You got to have staying power. And it says here that he would make war with the saints and prevail until time. There's a time coming that's going to end. There's a time coming, and I believe we're getting very close to it, Brother Gilbert. We get to a we get to a very close time where the kingdom of God is about, and I'll tell you why. I'll give you another sign I heard the man of God say. I heard him say, and this was back, I think, in the 80s. Before there was an Elon Musk or anything like that. He said this in people's eyes about popped up there. He's like, huh? He said, one of the signs that will write out revival, Sister Gloria, is when we see driverless cars. Cars that would drive them. I haven't remember that. These are back in the 80s when ain't nobody talked, ain't nobody thought about nothing like this. This man of God, and it was a sign of revival. Another sign. Oh, hallelujah. You don't believe that? This, here's, what, here's another sign that'll get you. He said it would come to pass at that day, at that time where God is about to move. He said men would be transformed into women. Yeah. And women would be transformed into men. Yeah. This is before you heard anything about transgender. We all look like, huh? How is it? Is, is it by magic or is it going to be? But you know what? I believed it, but I don't know how that was going to be, brother. I mean, who's going to be the who? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know what that. I was a senior playing quarterback on a football team, and before I knew what a, a, a funny was, I thought a funny was the dude that was soft and wouldn't fight right. and wouldn't play football. You like to plant flowers and cook, and, you know, stuff like that. that. That's what I thought. And then somebody told me, said, no, man, the guys get together. I said, uh-uh. So they do. I said, well, who will be who? I mean, what, 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 what you mean? Man, when he told me how they do it, I bowed on it. I could not believe it. I think for the next five years, I was just in denial. I just said, hey, hey, you can't do that. That's nasty. <laughs> I mean, I, I just don't know no other kind of way to say it. But that's what he said. A sign would be women would be transformed into men, and men would be trans. And what's going on today? Yeah. LGBTQ is a sign that the kingdom of God is coming. Yeah. The kingdom of God is about to be restored. The, when, when the Bible said when the transgressor comes forth and they fall. Folks, they can't get no more filthy than they are right now. They can't get drag queens with second graders. They can't get no more work. I don't see how they can get it. They're killing babies in the womb. What else you going to do? Yeah. How, how much worse can you get? Huh? And he said, when you see these things yeah. come to pass, a revival is at hand. Yeah. And I'm going to read one or two more scriptures and then we'll stop. Sister, Sister Gretchen, let's go to Amos 9. And while you're getting that, I'll just... 
You know, we talked about how he said that he would, they would, he would wear out the saints. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But God has got a, God's got a plan for the devil. The devil, hallelujah, he don't know what's about to hit him. Amos 9 and 11. This is God restoring the kingdom. 9 and 11 through 15. In, in that day will I ri raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. You that have, people that have fallen, people that have backslidden, people that have gotten weak. This is where God told us in Joel, I will restore the earth. He's going to pick up the fallen. Go ahead. And I will raise up the ruins, and I will build it as it was in the day of old. Some of us have gotten off track, and it's kind of messed our lives up, and we've gotten back on track, but we're kind of carrying those scars, and and, 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 and kind of got a little bit of mess on my hand. How many can say, I kind of made a mess, Brother Chuck. I, I, I made a mess of a few. I made a few. I made some, I made some bad choices. I done got myself back on track, but I'm kind of having to live with it. Read that trip again. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins. I'm going to raise up what you ruined. And I will build it as in the days of old. And I'm going to rebuild you back. I'm going to put you back in your, as if it's never happened before. Right. How are you going to do that? Through the blood. Amen. Thank God for the blood. Hallelujah. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Keep reading. That they may possess the remnants of Eden and of all the heathens which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. The days come. That the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of the grapes, him that soweth the seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet but wine. God is saying here, before you can plow your garden, your vegetables going to start growing. Before you, can pull, before you can plant your grapes, you're going to start picking grapes. Hallelujah. I'm going to take, it's going to take you over. Something's going to happen, saints. Something's going to happen in your life. What wasn't working before going to all of a sudden start working. What you couldn't get done before, something you're going to start getting done. Conditions and situations you ain't been able to get through, you suddenly are going to have an answer. Keep reading, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I will bring again the captivity of my people. I'm going to turn your captivity. Of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. He's going to restore the waste cities. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them, saith the Lord. He's fixing to restore the fallen. Hallelujah. If you fallen, you still got hope. If you've not been perfect, you still got hope. He's going to restore the fallen. Some people have gotten themselves bound by certain things. And you wrestle, you get it out, and then it comes back. And you're wrestling back. God said, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to fix that breach. I'm going to fix that situation. I'm going to, some of you got yourself under heavy burdens. And you've learned to live with it. God said, don't live with it. I'm going to undo these heavy burdens. I'm going to loose all the bands of wicked. If you've got a, a condition or if you've got a, a, an addiction, God said, I'm going to loosen you from your addiction. I'm going to pick you up if you're falling. And that that you made a mess out of, I'm going to make it something good. Something good. Something beautiful. Something good. How God going to take your mess up, hallelujah, and turn it into something good. God said all things work together anyhow for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. God is going to restore things. Rest restoration is, is on the way. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in Jeremiah 33, he said, the Lord will perform his promise. Sister Greg, you get to Zephaniah. We're going to wind up. Zephaniah 3 and 15 through 20. The Lord had taken away thy judgments. God's going to take away your judgments. He you, you, you judged yourself. You condemned yourself. You know, when you present yourself to God, the angels don't show up. 
The Bible said that when the sons of God presented themselves, Satan came also. When Joshua, the high priest, was standing before the angels and standing before God, the Bible said, and the devil came there with him to accuse him. He said, ah, oh, he can't have no blessings. He messed up. I know he did because I'm the one who tempted him. He, he, he lied. He, no, no, no. I got his fingerprints. Hallelujah. I got his fingerprints. I got his DNA. I got it all. I got this. This case is open and shut. Ah, uh, he guilty. He can't have nothing. And the Bible said that angel looked at that devil and said, Satan, the Lord rebuked you. Hallelujah. Shut up, devil. Don't tell me. I don't want to hear about his sins. But the Bible said Joshua was standing there, and he was guilty. He had sin all over him. Sin all, his clothes was full of sin. His clothes was full of filth. And he stood there before the angels. And God told the angels, said, take away his filthy garments. Take them off. God don't take them garments off of you. God don't take them garments off of me. Hallelujah. He going to get the old dirty socks off. Get the old dirty. He going to get that stuff that you've been messed up in. God going to get off. And, and when he takes them, when he takes them, when he takes them old dirty clothes off of you, then he gonna wash you in the blood of Jesus. And once he gets you white in the snow by the blood of Jesus, then he said, "Now your iniquities has passed. Give him a set of clean going. God got a new suit for you. God got a new dress for you. God got some new shoes for you." Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I said, "God's got a new wardrobe." He's going to restore us. Yes, Hallelujah. And I can tell you about other times, but we, we'll move on. But, you know, I, I think about that man in the Bible that was blind from birth. And he came to Jesus. And when he came to Jesus, Jesus took him. He didn't want to do it in front of everybody. The Bible said he took him away from the crowd, out of town. And he got him outside of town. He didn't want to make no spectacle of it. He got the man out of town, and he said, what, what do you want? He said, I, I came to you because I'm blind. Can't see. The Bible says Jesus spit, made some clay, and put it on his eyes. How did I think about this? When the man, he told him to wash, pulled it out of his eyes, and he said, can you see? And he looked at Jesus, and he said, well, yeah, I can see. He said, but I see men like trees. Hallelujah. Ah, this is the difference between healing and restoration. Hallelujah. He said, what? He said, I see men. He said, so the man was blind. He's definitely got a miracle because now he's seeing. But he ain't seeing right. Hallelujah. Some of us, sometimes we get, a, we get a miracle, but we don't get it right. We don't get it all the way. And we're just happy that now we was blind, now we see. No, God wants you to see perfectly. God want to work things out in your life perfectly. God don't want to have do it. I'm going to tell you what God wants to do. God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above that which you ask to think. According to his power. It works in you. And he laid his hands on that man. And then he said, what do you see? And the Bible said, he saw perfectly clear. God is going to perfectly clear up that mess in your life. Perfectly clear up that pain. Perfectly clear up that condition. Perfectly save your family. Perfectly. Yeah. But there was a woman that was a she was a widow, and the only family she had left was a son. And that son died. And it was having his funeral. Think about this. This is the kingdom of God being restored. The Bible said how Jesus went about doing good. Healing all that were sick and oppressed of the devil. You know why? He was showing us he's going to restore things the way they're supposed to be. You are supposed to be healed. Your needs are supposed to be met. You are supposed to have plenty of peace. Plenty of joy. Plenty of happiness. You're supposed to oh, hallelujah. You just don't understand. Hallelujah. And this woman lost her son. And a funeral was going by. This woman didn't give no offering. She didn't pray. She didn't even ask Jesus for no help. Hallelujah. Didn't even ask him. Jesus looked up and saw that casket and saw that woman and walked over there. Not, not because she asked. Oh, I heard, I read a scripture that said, before you call. Yes. 
I will answer. Before this woman even knew of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible said we know not the things that we sh should pray for as we are. But the Spirit searches the deep. The Spirit knows. And that Spirit of God took him over there and took him. And when he, when he saw her, he saw that son, realized that was her son. You know what he did? He restored the son back to life. And then he restored the son back to his mother. See, that's restoration right there. He, he, she didn't even ask for it. He just did it. You know why? Because he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above. Even if you don't ask for it, expect a miracle. Even if you don't say it in words, expect a miracle. Even if you can't put words to it, expect a touch of God. He'll restore the kingdom of God in your life. Stand to your feet. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you tonight for the preaching of the kingdom of God. Lord, these are the messages. Lord, that we were saved by. Said in under the man of God, he preached about a restoration and about revival. And God, we are the people in whom the ends of the world have come upon. We are the people, but who else are you going to pour out your spirit upon? Who else, Lord, are you going to send out into the highways and hedges to stand with the truth? This is the few that is standing on the foundation of God. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands to heaven right now. Oh, God, help us tonight to be restored fully in our spirits. God, let that salvation of Jesus Christ fully come forth in my life. God, let me become full of the Holy Ghost this time. God, I receive your spirit, but I want the fullness of your spirit. God, you heal me and help me, but God, I want to be fully made whole tonight. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, and every hand is lifted that's got a need here tonight. God, I speak the word of God to them. And Lord, when I speak this word, I want you to quicken it and make it come alive. But in the name of Jesus, God, whatever their needs are tonight, whether it's a healing, whether it's a financial need, or whether it's a sickness, or whether it's a bondage, God, I break to you. I speak the word of faith to this situation. I speak the word of faith to their home. I speak the word of faith to their body. I speak the word of faith to their lives, to their hearts. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God, confirm your word. Right now, search the hungry heart. God, search out that one that's needing you tonight. God, there's some, some here that need you tonight, Lord. God, they've, had, they've been wore out. But God, Lord, they've been wore out, but they ain't giving up. God, they've been wore out, but they're holding on. In the name of Jesus. God, you said when we had enough, we're going to take the kingdom with violence. God, put some violence in my prayer. Come on, tell say, Lord, put some violence in my prayer. Lord, help me to quit putting up with the devil. It's time for me to fight back. God, help me to fight back. Help me to fight the good fight of faith. I'm not going to give up, Lord. You're not a man that you should lie. Or the son of man that you should repent. If you said it, you'll do it. You spoke it. You're going to make it good. And God, I stand on your word tonight. God, you're going to save that child. God, you're going to save that man, that woman. God, you're going to break them yokes off that, that one I've been praying for this pound of drugs. God, take the taste of drugs out of their system. Take the taste of alcohol out of their mouth. Take, take the taste of that smoke out of them, God. In the name of Jesus, let the zeal of the Lord perform this. Oh, my God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you had enough, lift your hand and say, God, I've had enough of the flesh. I've had enough of the devil. And enough is enough. I turn my face to you. I turn my faith to you. Rebuke the devil in my life. Rebuke the devil in my home. Rebuke the devil over my family. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord. Visit these that are praying here tonight. Visit them in their offices. Visit them in the name of Jesus. 
Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Come on, give Jesus a good hand clap. Oh, hallelujah. I appreciate the Lord tonight.